Welcome back everybody to another League Basics video. My name is Nathan and I just wanted to today go over how to configure your runes and masteries and maybe you're new to League, maybe you're a returning player. Uh, this has actually been a requested video from a good buddy of mine who has been wanting to pick up League and learn it more but he doesn't really know how to pick his masteries and maybe he's new to the game so he's wanting to learn on what masters to take on a champion and what to do so let's get started so if you're new to league or maybe you are a returning player like I said and you don't know exactly how to find your runes and how to set them up properly uh, maybe you've been in a rush when you're about to start a game and you're just panicking you don't know what runes to take I'm here to help you with that so you're gonna go over here to the collection you're going to click runes and this is what's going to bring you up. It's going to bring you up to a rune page. And what we're going to do is, you can see I already have a bunch of runes already configured, but we're just going to ignore those. And we're actually going to create a new one. We're going to click Create New at the top right. Now, let's go over the runes for a minute. We have the Precision Tree. We have uh, Domination, Sorcery, Resolve, and Inspiration. Now, I'm going to go over just... A, a quick little bit over every single one real quick now let's start with the precision tree now the precision tree it says on the bottom it's improved tax and sustain damage a lot of the precision tree usually you're gonna see on bruisers um, same with like marksmen people who just want to fight and just always want to constantly do auto attacks um, personally if you were to do a precision tree you would most likely well let's go over it for a minute so let's click the preci precision tree so if you're going to, let's say you're going to 80 carry, um, typically 80 carries, um, let's say like a typical 80 carry like Caitlyn might want to take either lethal tempo and what that does is when you auto attack a champion, you'll gain a huge amount of attack speed, but then maybe you're in a lane where you need to sustain more like twitch and you're bursting like a heavy auto attacker that's just always out trading you you might want to go with more like fleet work now fleet work it's you build up movement speed and when you hit 100 cap of movement speed when your next auto you're going to heal uh, amount of like health back so that's pretty cool um, let's go over to press the attack now press the attack that's going to be for more people who just want to keep auto attacking now you might say oh isn't that better for marksmen not necessarily. Uh, some marksmen do want to take it, I guess, to say such as like Lucian. Lucian is like really broken right now with press the attack. He's one of the top 80 carries. Um, he, and then you also have people like, um, uh, who else would take press? I guess Twitch could also take press the attack if you're not in a lane where you need to sustain. Uh, so press the attack is just really good. And what it does is it your next uh, hitting an enemy uh, three consecutive times makes him vulnerable. And when it's saying making them vulnerable is after you attack an enemy three times, your next, like, auto attacks are going to do bonus damage, essentially from all sources of your damage. Now, this is Conquer. Now, Conquer is a rune that's typically ran on bruisers. Um, the only AD carry I can think of that runs Conquer is, like, Draven, because Draven gets bonus AD from his... Um, items from his bonus uh, AD that he builds and the more he catches his axes the better because the more you throw axes at people uh, your axes do like a bonus amount of AD that you have so if you drop your axes it's not good <laughs> so but what this does is your first attack versus an enemy champion is going to turn into true damage now true damage is basically damage that measures this armor all that it bypasses everything it's true damage it, it it directly affects your health you cannot protect against it so this is really good for someone like that um but yeah so this is just the precision tree this is like the top ones i'm not going to go over every single rune um but i will show you like a basic build for each person so since we're in the precision tree let's say for instance we're playing an ad carry like lucian we're most likely going to want to take press the attack um, after that, overheal and presence of mind really don't matter on Lucian. I mean, yeah, it's cool to have your ultimate on cooldown, but it doesn't matter. You're going to want to take Triumph, because Triumph restores 12 of your health and uh, grants additional 20 gold when you do a takedown, which meaning you're part of a kill. Um, 
or you get a kill yourself. So we're going to take Triumph. Next, most likely out of these three, you're most likely always going to want to take um, the attack speed bonus. I don't really know how to pronounce that word to be real with you. <laughs> so I'm not even going to try to attempt it. I just know that this is like perfect for 80 carries because it the more attack speed usually you have on any carry the better because you're all you're all about auto attacks i hate the excuse when people say oh i'm out of mana i can't help you in that fight you're an 80 carry you're about auto attacks that's what you do so you're most likely going to want to take the legend um next we have three different ones now this really depends on the situation you're you're in i think cut down and last stand are very overrated no, not overrated. Underrated, I should say. I didn't mean to say overrated. I meant to say underrated. I think a lot of AD carries don't usually take it. Because you typically aren't going to be on low health when fighting enemy champions. So there's really no point in taking it as an AD carry. Because your positioning is going to usually be in the back line. Meaning you're going to have a lot of health. So it's better to do um, Coupe de Gras and deal more damage to low enemy health champions so as an ad carry usually the standard ad carry build right now um it differs but usually if let's say you're playing someone like Jin, lucian you're going to want to take celerity uh it's great to have that bonus movement speed uh, especially when you're kiting around uh when you're trying to get away from sticky situations it's just really good to have that extra bonus because a lot of usually ad carries get a lot of bonus movement speed effects and so, and it really goes well with, let's say you go over here and you take Fleet Footwork, that also goes really well with your Celerity. And what it does is all movement speed bonuses are 8% more effective on you. Now second, usually typically any of the carries, you're going to want to take Gathering Storm. And Gathering Storm is just broken. You gain extra AP and AD throughout the whole game. Who doesn't want that? Especially AD carrying when you're basically all the team's damage later on in the game. Uh, you're basically the most protected person on the team so you're going to be putting out a lot of damage next um, usually you're going to want to take either offensive which is um, extra attack speed or you're going to want to take adaptive force you don't usually take cooldown reduction on any carries there's really no point I personally wouldn't take it so I mean it's up to you it, it's really how you want to play that, that's what I like about the rune system is yeah there are set base better runes but if you want to experiment take more AD, uh, CDR on an AD carry you think needs more of it, go for it. Who cares? Uh, it typically might not be the best rune to take, but it's good. It can be good. So, But typically, I would usually go either attack speed or offense. So since we're doing a Lucian build here, I'm probably going to go with the attack speed. And then over here, you can either pick more armor or more magic resist. We're probably going to go with the flex, adaptive force. Now, adaptive force... What that does is throughout the game, it scales into whatever you're building. So let's say you build, you're an AD carry, you're building a ton of AD. That adapt force is going to scale into more AD. Simple. And since we're coming down here to the last, I'm just going to take defensive. You know, more health is always perfect. So there we go. We have a typical rune page for an AD carry, such as like Lucian. So we're actually just going to title this Lucian. And we're going to hit save at the top here. So this would be like a typical Lucian build. Um, there is other things you can take. And people have taken some weird stuff. Uh, it, it's just really how you want to play. So let's head out of this. And uh, we're going to go to another rune page. So my buddy who was wanting to learn runes really wanted to learn. Um, he loves to play Misfortune. So I'm going to help him out here. So... If we're going to play Misfortune, we're definitely going to pick the Dominion Tree. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the Dominion Tree, or sorry, Domination Tree. Um, when you're playing the Domination Tree, usually it's for Assassins and Junglers. Um, a lot of Junglers like to take the Predator Rune that was really big at one point, and still do. Uh, Predator, basically you ramp up, you basically click your boots... And your boots will give you a burst of movement speed for like a few seconds. And it helps you just get into ganks real fast. And your next auto attack will do bonus damage. So that's why junglers really like to take it. It helps you move around the map faster. It helps you gank faster. There's just a lot of things you can do with it. But since my buddy... I know we're going up another day to carry. But my buddy really likes to do... Uh, he likes to play Misfortune. 
So, typically, if you're going to be playing Misfortune, how I would set up my runes is I would probably take Dark Harvest. And Dark Harvest is a rune that was really broken for a while these past few months. Uh, Riot actually just came out with patch notes and they just nerfed it recently. It's still a really good rune to take. It wasn't. It was hit pretty hard, but not hard enough to where you still can't take it. It's still really good on people. Uh, people like Shaco, especially he's been abusing it in the jungle. So if you're really good, um, so what Dark Harvest does is when you damage a low health champion, it inflicts adaptive damage on them. And then what you'll do is if you kill them, you actually will collect their, you'll you'll harvest their soul basically like these soul stones and you'll collect them and you'll get like adaptive damage towards your next target so the more you collect your souls off the person you kill the more damage your next auto is going to do or whatever to that next person so dealing damage to low health um, enemies will help you your damage in the long run um, next if I'm going to be playing Misfortune I'm most likely probably going to be taking Cheap Shot um, it works really well with your wombo combo, especially with um, her ult. Um, it's just it just works well. You do uh, true damage to enemies with impaired movement or actions. It just works so well with wombo combos and and different things. Uh, after that, I'm probably going to be taking eyeball collection. Uh, eyeball collection, you just gain attack damage or ability per uh, ward you kill. And then after that, I'm most likely going to be taking Ultimate Hunter for Misfortune. Uh, Ultimate Hunter works so well with... Uh, so what it does is after you get a takedown, or a kill, or you're part of a kill, you grants permanent cooldown reduction on your ultimate. So the more you can um, spam your ultimate on Misfortune, the better. She's basically an ult bot. She's just... She's really good. Um, next, for Misfortune, definitely probably going to be taking... Hmm. I don't know. There's a couple of things you can do. Personally, I would probably do Celerity and Gathering Storm. Uh, that's just me. So, like I said, with like Lucian or Jin, uh, typically my AD carries are just going to take these. You can also go Triumph or Coupe de Gras for lower health champions. That's really good too because that Coupe de Gras is actually going to help with your Dark Harvest as well. So, really, it just depends how you want to play her. Um, but I'm going to take Celerity and Gathering Storm. And then next, you're just going to want to take a Flex, Flex, and then go Defensive. So we're going to call this the Misfortune Tree. So let's name this Misfortune. Probably spelled her name wrong. I'm a terrible speller, so if I spelt her name wrong, whatever. So this would be like your typical Misfortune setup. Um, there's different things you can take on her, but this would probably be the best one that I would say. But it's up to you. I mean, like I said with runes, if you want to experiment and take other runes, go for it. There's nothing stopping you. So it's your own game. Alright, we're going to go back. We're going to create another rune page. Now let's go over the sorcery tree. Sorcery tree is typically going to be for mages uh, or supports. Uh, usually, people who um, do a lot of burst damage, and it helps them excel their abilities, and uh, it helps them get more resource. So, a typical sorcery tree, you're going to be taking it on people like, um, well, let's take for example, a really good. Phase Rush person is going to be someone like Ryze. Ryze would typically want to take Phase Rush because uh, he's really good at kiting, first of all. And he's typically a late game mage carry. So when you're playing Ryze, it's good to like really rush around the map. And what Phase Rush does is after you hit a champion three times with attacks, your next, uh, your next ability is going to grant you a movement speed bonus and slow resistance. So... It's really good for people who want to just move around and, like, kite. Mages are really good at that. Mages are typically people who also want to zone, so that's also really good. Now, if we're going to be playing Rise, probably going to be taking a uh, Mana Flow Band into, 
either celerity or transcendence. I don't see why you take absolute focus. Um, why you're above? I mean, you can. So this is kind of a hard one. All three of them are good for rise, especially with phase rush and go really well with celerity. Uh, transcendence can go really well. It's you get you gain 10% cooldown reduction when you reach level 10. Uh, that's really good on rise. The more you can spam your abilities, the better. I personally would probably take celerity. That's just me. I like the movement speed. And because you're going to be building a ton of cooldown reduction items anyways. And then after that, I would probably take either Gathering Storm or uh, Scorch. And I'm probably going to be doing Gathering Storm. And then your next for Rise, I would probably take into the Inspiration Tree. Now, the Inspiration Tree is kind of a tricky tree. It's kind of weird in a sense of it's usually you'll see a lot of like supports take it um, what it can do is it can give you free boots at 10 minutes well not free boots so you, you start the game with like these little boots and at 10 minutes you'll buy basically cheaper boots so like the the price of boots go way down uh, you can take a free basically a stopwatch which is a, basically a free hourglass that's pretty good um, you can take Future Market here, which basically you go into debt, but you can buy items faster. So you don't really typically have to have the gold in order to buy it. So what it does is, like, let's say an item is 500 gold, but you only have 250. It will let you borrow that gold to use it. And then, I don't know, there's just a lot of other stuff here that's really good. This is a really good one. Usually people take Cosmic Insight. It will give you a cooldown reduction. Uh, max cooldown reduction, summoner spell item. There's just a lot of cool things here. Just look at. Hex flash is kind of a fun one. Um, it basically gives you another flash once you're flashed on cooldown. But it's like a wind up flash. So after you flash, you'll get a hex flash. And you'll press, you'll press hex, hex flash to do like a wind up flash. And you'll like flash in place somewhere. So it can be good. But we're going to be playing Rise. So most likely. I like taking perfect timing to build into my hourglass later on. Um, and then also do cosmic insight. And then we're going to take offensive, flex, and defense. Alright, so this would be a typical rise setup. <laughs> Alright. Um, now, the resolve tree. Let's, let's talk about the resolve tree for a minute. The resolve tree, you're typically going to want to take, um, this is for people who are like bruisers or tanks, people who love to just fight or who get really beefy. Um, a perfect example of a resolve tree is, let's say, like Aftershock. Now, Aftershock, uh, you gain, once you immobilize an enemy champion, you're going to gain a burst of magic damage and you get more defenses. So this would be typically on someone like Maokai. Uh, Zack takes it. Um, people who are big tanks usually take Aftershock. Um, people like Nautilus would be really good with it. Um, now, there's three different choices you can take. Shield Bash has been a really big one lately. Uh, I like to take Shield Bash. So let's say we're building Nautilus. So we're going to call this the Nautilus rune page real quick. Now, Nautilus is typically a tank. He's like an AP tank, so we're going to take Aftershock, and then with Nautilus, I like to take Shield Bash, because your next, whenever you gain a shield, your next basic attack will give you bonus damage to a champion. And then after that, most likely either going to be taking Conditioning, which Conditioning, it'll help you scale into late game. Uh, after 10 minutes, you'll get bonus armor, magic resist, or you can get Bone Plating, which is pretty cool. Uh, after... The next three basic attacks or attacks you receive from deal less damage. So that's really good. And second wind is just after you take damage from an enemy champion, uh, you heal back some of that health. So if I'm playing Nautilus, I'm mostly going to be doing conditioning unless I really need it. Bone plating <coughs> to defend off like, um, let's say, uh, people who are like harassed champions like Teemo or something I need to sustain from. So most likely I'm just going to go conditioning, and it helps me scale in a late game and even get more tanky. 
Now, since we're playing Nautilus, most likely we're going to take Overgrowth. Um, Nautilus's shield is based off how much health he has. So the more health he has, the bigger the shield he's going to get on his W. We're not mostly going to take uh, Revitalize. That's kind of pointless on him. I mean, you can take it. Your shield will be stronger, but it's just better to do Overgrowth overall, especially scaling into late game. Unflinching, you typically want to take that on supports like Braum or someone that... Um, <clears throat> or like Thresh, what you do is after you use a summoner spell, you'll gain a burst of soul resistance, and also you'll gain a tenacity. So tenacity is just like magic resistant armor. So, but we're gonna be taking overgrowth since we're we're talking about this is like tank, this is like top lane Nautilus build. So, um, now since we are top lane Nautilus, we have a couple options here. We can either go into the precision tree. Or we can go into the sorcery tree. Uh, sorcery, if we're needing more extra magic resist, we're most likely going to take nullifying orb and probably gathering storm or transcendence. But since we're really playing Nautilus, I kind of like I kind of like gathering storm here um, for fighting, and it just gives you some extra damage while you're tanking. You know, uh, I don't know though. Transcend is really good too. It's good to have the cooldown reduction. It's really just how you want to play it. But let's say we want to be personally. I like to take the extra attack speed and the coup de gras on Nautilus. Um, Nautilus does a lot of damage that people don't realize, and it can be really good. Uh, Nautilus works really well on attack speed as well, <clears throat> because when you have your W shield on, you get like bonus damage towards your autos. And so, uh, attack speed just works really well on Nautilus, but, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It just really depends on what you want to take. Um, I'm probably going to do offensive and then do defensive. So. Alright. <clears throat> now, let's go over one more. So, typically, when you would take the Inspiration Tree first are people who don't really need or don't really benefit from other masteries. And a perfect example of the sorcery tree is, let's say, you're playing uh, Urgot top. Urgot is really good with Spellbook, and the reason being is Urgot doesn't really work well with other masteries, or it does, doesn't really make sense to take other masteries on them. Uh, Spellbook's just really good because you can switch out your spells. Um, so what it does when you're in game, once you use your summoner spell, you'll get a cooldown, and you'll be able to switch them out. <clears throat> um, after that, I would most likely take Magical Footwork or Perfect Timing. I'm going to take Magical Footwork. Uh, I would most likely want to either go into Minion uh, Dematerializer or probably go into Biscuit Delivery. Biscuit Delivery works really well with the Time Warp Tonic. Um, biscuit Delivery, you'll gain a biscuit every 3 minutes until 12 minutes, and it restores some of your health and mana. Now, Time Warp Tonic used to be different. Uh, they recently just changed it so that once you take a potion or a biscuit, you'll gain, um, <clears throat> you'll gain movement speed, and you'll gain health and magic just right away. So once you take your biscuit, all this stuff will hit you right away instead of having to go over time. So this is usually the typical ergot. We're going to call this ergot. And then after that, if I'm playing ergot top, I'm going to want to go on probably shield bash and bone plating. Um, ergot can gain a shield on his W, and then bone plating is just good for uh, sustaining. I'm going to go adaptive, adaptive, and defensive. <clears throat> Alright, so we have our runes. <clears throat> so that's just a typical rune setup. Um, I hope this video helped. 